Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastytutes.com. In this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how you can create long type shadows in Adobe Photoshop at just a click of a button. Now before we get into this tutorial I just want to show you a quick demonstration so you know exactly what's in store for you. So here I have a Photoshop document open and currently we can see I have one type layer in the layers panel. Now check this out. I'm going to come into my layers panel and select the type layer then come into my Actions panel and select an action from my list here. Once selected, I'm going to hit the Play button at the bottom of my Actions panel, and upon click, I have created a long, seamless shadow on my type. Now, if we look in the Layers panel, we can see I have a new layer below my type layer in the Layers panel. This type shadow has been created separately. So, to this layer, I can double-click and change the layer styles. I can change the color overlay, or add a gradient effect. Simple. So now I'm going to toggle the visibility of this shadow layer I just created and quickly change my typeface. I'll select my type layer in the layers panel, then come into the actions panel again and this time select a different action, hit the play button at the bottom of the actions panel, and this time not only do I have a long type shadow but I also have a nice stroke effect applied to the type. So one last time, I'll toggle the visibility of the type shadow layer in the layers panel. I'll change my font again. Select the type layer in the layers panel. Come into the actions panel, select another action. Hit the play button. And we have another drop shadow effect. This time, instead of a stroke effect, we have a cutout space around the type. So in just a few clicks, I created four different type shadow effects with their own separate layers which I had the flexibility to apply layer styles to, such as changing the color overlay and adding gradient effects. Pretty cool, right? Now those are just some of the shadow effects you can create here. You will soon see there is a lot more for you to choose from. So using these long type shadow effects, I have created various type compositions. In this composition, I have used long type shadows. In this composition, I have used a small shadow effect. In this example, I have used a stroke shadow effect in the down direction. I have replicated it down a few times and changed the colors. In this example, I have gone for a super long shadow with the cut effect around the type and placed a texture inside the shadow effect. So this tutorial is going to provide you with a rich resource of shadow effects which you can download and use yourself. Now at this point, you may be wondering, how did I create the shadow effects earlier at just a click of a button? Well, to do this, I have previously created multiple action sets that produce these shadow effects from a single type layer in the Layers panel. In this video, I'm going to share these actions with you so you too can create long type shadows at just a click of a button. Now before I demonstrate how to use these actions, I suggest you download the Long Type Shadow Interactive PDF. This is a document I have prepared to catalogue all the actions I have created visually. You can use this as a reference, so you can comprehend, browse and experiment with the many effects on offer. You can download this PDF for free, the link is in the description. To follow along with this tutorial and install these actions, you will also need to download the project folder. You can download this for free, the link is in the description. Now back in Photoshop, before we install the actions, we will first need to have our actions panel visible. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to pull my actions panel out from my workspace panel stack on the right, so you can clearly see what I'm doing and how I'm going to use these actions. If you do not see your Actions panel, you can come up to Window and scroll down and activate your Actions panel there. So once you can clearly see your Actions panel in Photoshop, it's time to install the Actions. Once you have downloaded the Project folder, you can find the Actions in the Actions folder. Now the Actions folder comes with 18 Action sets, and each set is named carefully to identify which shadow effect it applies. To install the actions, simply select them all in the folder, right click and open with Photoshop. If done correctly, you will now see the action sets in your actions panel. 
Now if we look closely in the actions panel, I can toggle down each action set and see inside each action set there is four individual actions. So for example, here we have the stroke down right set. This means that these actions will create a long type shadow down to the right. Now inside the set we have action 25 to 28 and some are named E1 to E3. Well, the E means extended, so we have extended 1, extended 2, and extended 3. So each one of these actions creates a type stroke shadow down to the right, but each action creates a different length, and I'll be demonstrating this shortly. Now, there are a lot of actions here, so it will help to cross-reference these actions in the PDF document to see which effect will be applied upon playing the action. Okay, so once you have the actions installed and you have your reference PDF, we can start creating some type shadows. So to create your type shadows, you're going to need to open up the PSD template, which you can also find in the project folder. Once open, you will see something like this. Now the actions have been designed to work with this document in particular. This document is pretty large. If I press command I, we can see it's 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters at a 300 dpi. So whatever type shadow effects you create in this document, you should be able to use them in other documents. So currently we have a background layer and a single type layer in the layers panel. Notice in the layers panel, this layer is called type layer. Now this must never change. Do not change the name of this layer. If the name of this layer changes, the actions will not work, so keep that in mind. Now the current font is set up like so. If you do not have the font and wish to install it, you can also find this in the project folder. Now if I activate the type tool and click on the type, we can see that this is a type box. So here you have the flexibility to change the font, type in some new text, or paste in some paragraph text. So how can we use the actions? So once you have your type set up, just how you like it in the canvas area. For this example, I'm going to use some paragraph text, which I have just pasted into the type layer and formatted like so. To successfully use an action, you must apply the following three step action guide before triggering any action. Step one, select the type layer in the layers panel. Step two, select the action in the actions panel and step three hit the play button at the bottom of the actions panel now you must carry out the process in that order or the action may not work once you have triggered the action correctly you will now have your new shadow layer in your layers panel beneath your type layer simple so now i'm going to demonstrate further the four individual actions in each action set and for this example, I'm going to use the stroke down right action set. So I'm going to come across into the actions panel and focus on the number seven stroke down right action set. So I'll be sure to toggle that down like so. And I'm going to start with the first action in the set, action 25 LSTSDR. So before we trigger any action, I must first select the type layer in the layers panel then select the action I wish to trigger in the actions panel. With the action selected, I'm going to press the play button at the bottom of the actions panel. And here we have just created a stroke down right type shadow. Now in the layers panel, we will see a new layer has been generated below the type layer. And if you look closely, you will see that this new layer has the same name as the action. Now this has been programmed for reference. So this new layer is called LSTS. DR, and this is an abbreviation, which stands for Long Stroke Type Shadow Down Right. So I'm going to toggle the visibility of this new shadow layer, and this time come into the next action, Action 26, LSTSDRE1. So I'll select the type layer first, then select the action in the Actions panel, hit the Play button at the bottom of the Actions panel, and this time we have created the same shadow effect, but this time a little longer. So I'll toggle the visibility of this new shadow layer, select the type layer, then select the next action down, action 27, and hit the play button on the actions panel. 
and this time we have created the same shadow effect, but this time a little longer than before. So I'll toggle the visibility of this new shadow layer, select the type layer, then select the next action down, action 28, and hit the play button on the actions panel. And this time we have created the same shadow effect, but this time so long it proceeds off the canvas area. So in the layers panel, I now have four individual type shadow layers with the same stroke effect around the type, but with four different lengths. So that's how each action set works. In each action set, you will find four various lengths, small, medium, large, and extra large. Now these four sizes have been created for your convenience. So how can we use these actions in the context of a project? Well, this can be done quite simply. What I recommend you do is first set up your design, and once you're happy with your design, use the template document to create your drop shadow effects and drag them in. For example, this is a document I have prepared earlier. So this is the finished design. This is a simple typographic composition. And if I zoom in, what I want to do here is add a shadow effect to the word summer. So I'll activate the type tool and click into the type and I'll press Command C to copy. Next, I'll come into my type template, and as we can see, this is a completely different font. So what I'm going to do with the type tool is click into my text box, uh, select all the type, and press Command V. Now, this should change the font to the format from the previous document. Great. So now I have my type element ready to apply my shadow effect to. So on this occasion, I want to apply a seamless drop shadow down to the right, but not too long. So I'm going to carefully select the type layer, come into my actions panel, and I'm going to choose action 1, which means long type shadow down right. So upon click, I now have my new shadow layer in my layers panel. Once that is created, I'll simply come into my layers panel, select the type layer, press and hold shift, and select the new shadow layer below. With them both selected, with the selection tool active, I can simply click into the canvas area and drag into the tab of my other document. When the other document opens, I can drag my mouse into the canvas area and release to drop my creative into the new document. Once dropped into my new artwork, I'll quickly press Command G to group these two layers together so I can easily move them around as one on my canvas area. And I'll just name the group to type shadow. In this instance, the type is a little large, so I'll press Command T and scale the group down to fit nicely into my composition. I'll find the type layer I have just replaced and either toggle the visibility off or delete it from my composition altogether. So very easily, I just created a shadow effect and added it into my artwork. If I want to make any modifications, this can easily be done. With my type tool, I can select the type, and on this occasion, I'm going to change it to white. And then I'm going to double click on my shadow layer. I'm going to add a gradient effect. I'll click on the gradient color bar and change the colors like so. And just like that, I have a nice custom shadow effect. So adding your type creative from the PSD template is as simple as that. Now, there is another way. Now, sometimes you may alter text quite drastically, so it will be hard to paste into the template document. So, let's look at another example. If you'd like to follow along, you can find this document in the PSD folder. If you do not have the font installed, you can install this from the project folder. So, here is an ordinary type composition. So, what I'm going to do here is come into the Layers panel, select the top layer, Press and hold shift and select the bottom layer. With them both selected, I'm going to press command T to activate free transform. Now we can see a bounding box around these layers. What I'm going to do next is find the middle point on the far right side of the bounding box. I'll place my mouse cursor over this and press and hold command on the keyboard. Now my mouse cursor will change to this white mouse arrow. This will enable me to click and drag up and drastically distort my text like so. So now I have these type layers that have been altered quite dramatically. So on this occasion, I want to add a large type shadow to the word fun. 
Now, I cannot copy and paste my type into the template like I did earlier, as this will not work. These type layers have now been distorted. So on this occasion, I'm going to select the type layer in the layers panel I wish to add the shadow effect to. And with the selection tool, I'll click and drag it into the tab of my template document and drop the type layer into my template like so. So now I have my new type layer in my template document. Now, every one of these 72 actions is programmed to apply to a type layer that is specifically named type layer in caps in the layers panel. Now, if I apply an action to this new type layer, the actions will simply not work because this type layer is currently called fun. So what I need to do here is double click into the other type layer name in the layers panel. I'll copy the name, then I'll delete this layer. I'll double click in the name of my other type layer and paste. So now this type layer in the layers panel is called type layer. So now with this layer selected, I'm going to come into the action set 13, cut down right and select action 52 and hit play. And we have now created the shadow effect for that type. Excellent. Now it's a simple case of selecting both layers in the layers panel and just like earlier drag them into the other document. Now if we look carefully we can see that on this occasion this type shadow is not long enough to go off the page. To extend the shadow effect all I have to do is come into the layers panel, select my shadow layer and press command J to duplicate it and simply move it down and across to link up with the other shadow layer with them both selected in the layers panel, I can simply press Command E to join them together. So that's two ways you can use the actions to create your shadow effects and use them in other creative documents. So that's how you can create long type shadows in Adobe Photoshop. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, hit the like button on my Facebook page. If you'd like to see more videos like this in future, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial, all links are in the description. Well, that's it for another video, brought to you by teachertudes.com. Thanks for watching, have fun guys, and I'll see you next time.